save 1.8 billion dollars uh, billion barrels of oil uh, overall 1.8 billion barrels of oil and that's like taking 58 million cars off the road for an entire year today we're also going to go one step further in order to save energy and taxpayer dollars my administration led by secretary chu at energy as well as administrator johnson at gsa is doubling the number of hybrid vehicles in the federal fleet even as we seek to reduce the number of cars and trucks used by our government overall so we're going to lead by example and practice what we preach cutting waste saving energy and reducing our reliance on foreign oil but we have to do more we need to make continued investments in clean coal technologies and advanced biofuels a few weeks ago i announced loan guarantees to break ground on america's first new nuclear facility in three decades a project that will create thousands of jobs and in the short term as we transition to cleaner energy sources we still got to make some tough decisions about opening new offshore areas for oil and gas development in ways that protect communities and protect coastlines and this is not a decision that i've made lightly it's one that ken and i as well as carol browner my energy advisor and others in my administration looked at closely for more than a year but the bottom line is this given our energy needs in order to sustain economic growth and produce jobs and keep our businesses competitive we are going to need to harness traditional sources of fuel even as we ramp up production of new sources of renewable homegrown energy so today we're announcing the expansion of offshore oil and gas exploration but in ways that balance the need to harness domestic energy resources and the need to protect america's natural resources under the leadership of secretary salazar will employ new technologies that reduce the impact of oil exploration will protect areas that are vital to tourism the environment and our national security and will be guided not by political ideology but by scientific evidence that's why my administration will consider potential areas for development in the mid and south atlantic and the gulf of mexico while studying and protecting sensitive areas in the arctic that's why we'll continue to support development of leased areas off the north slope of Alaska while protecting Alaska's Bristol Bay. Now, there will be those who strongly disagree with this decision, including those who say we should not open new, any new areas to drilling. But what I want to emphasize is that this announcement is part of a broader strategy that will move us from an economy that runs on fossil fuels and foreign oil to one that relies more on homegrown fuels and clean energy and the only way this transition will succeed is if it strengthens our economy in the short term and the long run to fail to recognize this reality would be a mistake now on the other side there are going to be some who argue that we don't go nearly far enough who suggest we should open all our waters to energy exploration without any restriction or regard for the broader environmental and economic impact and and, and to those folks i've got to say this uh, we have less than two percent of the world's oil reserves we consume more than twenty percent of the world's oil and what that means is that drilling alone can't come close to meeting our long-term energy needs and for the sake of our planet and our energy independence we need to begin the transition to cleaner fuels now so the answer is not drilling everywhere all the time but the answer is not also for us to ignore the fact that we are going to need vital energy sources to maintain our economic growth and our security ultimately we need to move beyond the tired debates of the left and the right between business leaders and environmentalists between those who would claim drilling is a cure-all and those who would claim it has no place because this issue is just too important to allow our progress to languish while we fight the same old battles over and over again for decades we've talked about how our dependence on foreign oil threatens our economy yet our will to act rises and falls with the price of a barrel of oil when gas gets expensive at the pump suddenly everybody's an energy expert and when it goes back down everybody's back to their old habits for decades we've talked about the threat to future generations posed by our current system of energy 
even as we can see the mounting evidence of climate change from the Arctic Circle to the Gulf Coast. And this is particularly relevant to all of you who are serving in uniform. For decades, we've talked about the risks to our security created by dependence on foreign oil. But that dependence has actually grown year after year after year after year. And while our politics has remained entrenched along these worn divides, the ground has shifted beneath our feet. Around the world, countries are seeking an edge in the global marketplace by investing in new ways of producing and saving energy. From China to Germany, these nations recognize that the nation that leads the clean energy economy will be the country that leads the global economy. And meanwhile, here at home, as politicians in Washington debate endlessly about whether to act, our own military has determined that we can no longer afford not to. Some of the press may be wondering why we are uh, announcing offshore drilling in a hangar at Andrews Air Force Base. Well, if there's any doubt about the leadership that our military is showing, you just need to look at this F-18 fighter and the light armored vehicle behind me. The Army and Marine Corps have been testing this vehicle on a mixture of biofuels. And this Navy fighter jet, appropriately called the Green Hornet, will be flown for the first time in just a few days on Earth Day. If tests go as planned, it will be the first plane ever to fly faster than the speed of sound on a fuel mix that is half biomass. The Air Force is also testing jet engines using biofuels and had the first successful biofuel-powered test flight just last week. I, I don't want to drum up any kind of rivalry here, but... Now, the Pentagon isn't seeking these alternative fuels just to protect our environment. They're pursuing these homegrown energy sources to protect our national security. Our military leaders recognize the security imperative of increasing the use of alternative fuels, decreasing energy use, reducing our reliance on imported oil, making ourselves more energy efficient. And that's why the Navy, led by Secretary Mavis, who's here today, has set a goal of using 50% alternative fuels in all planes, vehicles, and ships in the next 10 years. That's why the Defense Department has invested $2.7 billion this year alone to improve energy efficiency. So moving towards clean energy is about our security. It's also about our economy, and it's about the future of our planet. And what I hope is the policies that we've laid out, from hybrid fleets to offshore drilling, from nuclear energy to wind energy, underscores the seriousness with which my administration takes this challenge. It's a challenge that requires us to break out of the old ways of thinking, to think and act anew. And it requires each of us, regardless of whether we're in the private sector or the public sector, whether we're in the military or in uh, the civilian side of government, to think about how could we be doing things better? How could we be doing things smarter? So that we are no longer tethered to the whims of what happens somewhere in the Middle East or with other major oil producing nations. So I'm open to proposals from my Democratic friends and my Republican friends. I think that we can break out of the broken politics of the past when it comes to our energy policy. I know that we can come together to pass comprehensive energy and climate legislation that's going to foster new, energy, uh, new industries, create millions of new jobs, protect our planet, and help us become more energy independent. That's what we can do, that is what we must do, and I'm confident that is what we will do. So thank you very much, and thanks again to all of you who are serving uh, in our arms, armed services. It, uh, you are making an enormous contribution, and this is just one example of the leadership that you're showing. Thank you very much. Thank you.